All right, next, I have this background mountain that I'm trying to blend with my other background mountains and sky. And the last thing I'm going to do is play with the final direct adjustment, which is under image adjustments, and it's going to be hue saturation. I've already done levels. I've done color balance. That gave it, so I'll go through my history here. Image started like that, really intense. Levels helped tone down some of that brightness. Color balance helped shift that, that blue temperature of the light to a more even, more yellow and red temperature of the light, which helps feel like it's coming forward from this background. And now the last one I'm going to do is image adjustment hue saturation. This one is for big shifts. You can change the full spectrum of color. And if you do it too much, it's going to go to monochrome, right? But just a little bit to the left or right. It's kind of how we use all these tools. I'm going to go a little bit to the left. Even though that makes the sky match less, it kind of helps with the mountain. And then saturation is the intensity. Basically going towards grayscale or going towards fully saturated color. Saturation is the art term for intensity. Okay, I'm not going to play with lightness here, but what I will do is now go to image adjustments levels again. So we always do it in that order, levels, color balance, hue saturation. Those are the only ones you need. And I'm going to take my midtones and darken them again. And I think that's about right. Now I am able to use my eraser and I'm able to use it at 100% opacity because I want to first get rid of these hard edges, blend them. There's no way to do that in traditional collage except to kind of melt the paper. So it's like melting the edges of my, my paper. And I'm going to use a large brush. So for this, maybe around 400, 500 pixels and a 0% hardness at 100% opacity. And the first thing I do is I obliterate that hard edge with that 100% opacity soft edged eraser. I just get rid of that hard edge completely so that all the way around it. But I don't go into the mountain, right? Because I want the mountain to feel solid. So that if I turned off my other layers, you could see that all of this is now soft. And then I might even make my brush a little bit bigger because this is that ghosting effect I like where I can go outside of the selection and just hit a little bit. And you see how it will project that erasing through it and kind of ghost it. Even though I'm at 100% opacity, it will kind of echo with 20% opacity, 15% opacity, eventually to 5% opacity until they start to blend pretty nicely, right? Now, if I want to blend it even more and better, then I, once I got rid of that hard edge, I can go in at lower opacities, still very soft because I'm blending organic things here. And now I'm going in at 60%. Maybe I'll take it down to 30 something. and being really careful not to cut into my mountain at all. Just a few taps. I can always do Command Z if I think I took it too far. Same thing here. To transition that deep blue sky, which I liked. Which will be a nice contrast to these kind of candy colors that are coming into the, the middle ground and foreground. All right, so now I've blended three layers together. And the whole point is that you're not able to tell that they come from different sources. So that source, that source, that, the background source. And it's doing a lot to fulfill my own vision. Next, I have this mountain. So get to practice the same things again. It's already lined up where I want it, but I need to play with the direct image adjustments. Notice I have a lot of overlap. That's what helps with organic blending. 
It's like tons of overlap behind things. So I'm not trying to blend a hard edge into a hard edge. I have a hard edge onto a pixel field. So what do I start with? I start with image adjustment levels. And I first really only mess with this mid-tone slider. I'm going to push it a little bit brighter because darker doesn't make sense. I lose too much pixel information. The reason you don't want to use the side sliders is that's going to immediately take out pixel information. Either make it black or make it bright white. So you just want to adjust the mid-tones. And then if you're worried about it being too bright, you can limit it a little bit by moving that white slider. Next, image adjustment color balance. This is for color temperature. This color temperature is pretty good, but it always helps to just mess with it a little bit. Starting in the mid-tones. We're going to get more into this when we do creature compositing because the more foreground the, the thing is, the more you really want to pay attention to its color temperature, especially to the color theory of shadows being cooler and highlights being warmer. That's something we can play with here. So I'm just fiddling with it around the edges. Yeah, I think that works. So we can see what those did. This is what it was when it came in. This was levels to brighten it up. This was color balance, very subtle. Now, the big guns, if needed, is hue saturation. And I'm going to take the hue and just push it a little bit each way. See if one works better than the other. And it seems like going a little bit to the left is good. And then I'm going to push the saturation. I don't want it more intense. I want it less intense because this is receding into the background. Now I use my eraser at 100% opacity to get rid of these hard edges, all of these hard seams. First, you have to totally get rid of them. Right. Next, I can go to a lower opacity. And I can always check if I really got rid of those hard seams by turning off the layers behind it. Make sure there's no hard edge showing anywhere. That's within your the parameters of your sketch. And that's why it's nice to have command semicolon to turn on your, your borders. Okay, now I go to a lower opacity with my eraser and I can be a little bit more targeted, blending in a little bit more slowly. Now I'm gonna show you a different technique as well. What's great about clouds and mist and atmosphere is that you can take them down in low opacity and they just help to blend things together. Like this mountain range now looks like it's one mountain range. Right? Okay, so now if I think that matches pretty well, I can move on. So this is just, just using the eraser tool with a soft edge. It's a very soft edge. Nope, I liked it better, a little bit brighter. Okay, now what goes on top of that? It's good to hit Command S as soon as you've kind of adjusted a layer. Now this goes on top of that. Now this I'm gonna show you a different technique. Because I could get rid of the hard edges again with 100% opacity. Wouldn't be a bad idea. But I don't want that white shape at all, right? That's just not good. So what I'm going to do is actually use my magic wand. And I'm going to use contiguous, right? With a standard tolerance of 32. And I'm going to select that white. Then I'm going to hold down shift and add to that selection to get all of this border, anything that overlaps with my sketch, and kind of take it out. Now here's the problem. The magic wand selects pixels that are similar to each other, and when you have contiguous checked, it's pixels that are touching each other that are similar. 
the tolerance tells you how much similar they need to be. So 32 is a little too big because when I add this on, it also selects the inside of these cakes, which I want to keep. So I do Command Z and I back it off and I'm going to change my tolerance now just down to 12 and see if that's a little bit, yeah, more specific. So this is another way to select similar pixels, especially if you have like a sound stage kind of asset like I do from here because this was Will Cotton's maquette for his paintings. Okay, now I've selected that whole bar. What I can do is just hit delete, but that might leave little debris. So if I hit delete and then hit Command D to deselect, you'll see that it leaves this little halo. That's kind of really sharp edge. That's called anti-aliasing. Because without any additional settings, your selections with the magic wand or with the lasso are cutting between pixels. In order to soften that, what I'm going to do is select the empty space with my magic wand. Selects that very well. And then I'm going to click on select and mask in the magic wand tools. In PhotoP, this is called refine edge, but it's the same tool. When I do that, I get this sidebar, which takes quite a bit of running memory. And there I can do what's called feather. And I'm just going to feather it by about a pixel and a half. That's all. And then you'll see what it does when I hit delete, zoomed in. So that feather is now no longer slipping between the pixels. Instead, it's gradating by a pixel and a half. Each time I hit delete, it's projecting out a pixel and a half and gradating the pixels within that range. So that gives me a much more believable edge. All right. So I'm just going to go through these next few steps. Now that I've cut out that cleanly, there might be stuff over here I want to cut out. So I'm going to do that again with my magic wand. But sometimes my magic wand isn't going to find the edge I want. Right. So then I just go right to my lasso. And this is the refined cutout sometimes you need with your lasso tool. So what I'm going to do is actually just draw with my lasso an organic edge to the top of this cake. That little peak around these slices on top of this frosting loop around. I can do this in chunks and then delete and then continue it on with this. So these are the refined cutouts. This is like using an X-Acto knife on your collage elements instead of tearing, like being really, really precise. And it can help to use a tablet, though I'm just using a trackpad. Now the problem with doing that is my lasso just like my magic wand is giving me right in between the, uh, the pixels. How can I change that? Well, when you're using your lasso for refined cutting, you can set its feather right in the tool options. So if I feather it by two pixels, when I select it now, I'll just do this little chunk so you can see, that's going to be a little bit softer. You see that feather versus that. So that's an option. The other option I can do is simply take my magic wand, select all that empty space, and then go to select and mask again and use that pixel and a half feather. In fact, I can get it to remember this by clicking remember settings right here. So each time I use select and mask, it will do that pixel and a half feather and then just hit delete a few times to bring it all to the same level. And that's doing it across that whole selection. All right. Now, the problem is I can still play with the colors and the lighting. And I'm going to do that with direct adjustments. And I'm almost done for your questions, right? But once you've cut something out, or even before you've cut it out, it helps to do these three adjustments to your layers to help them match. First levels, play with the midtone slider. Everyone needs to have experience with this. So I'm going to make mine a little bit darker here because I'm still in the midtones. I'm going to limit the highlights a little bit. Next, color balance, image adjustment, color balance. 
And this has a lot of yellow and red, so I'm going to push it a little bit towards blue in those